built in Bailey Homes, Ofcon reported a 17.6% decrease in its full year headline earnings per share to 11 Rand 66 as the sector remained depressed. The group increased revenue by 21.2% to 17.9 billion Rand. And joining us for a closer look at those numbers is Mike Wiley, chairman of WBHO. Thanks so much, Mike, for joining us in studio Pleasure. today. Well, uh, as I said, those are some of the headline uh, figures, and uh, you know, we're all too familiar with the woes of the construction sector, yet, We've got uh, the company raising its dividend to 352 cents from 330 cents. What's inspiring uh, some of that confidence now, given the year that was, and the outlook still looking pretty murky? Um, Alicia, the, um, yes, it is, a, it is an interesting situation. I think, I think we have, the industry hopefully has now finally bottomed out. I think we maybe said that last year as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, on the positive side, our turnover <coughs> is, has been strong. It's up quite a, quite a bit from about 15 to about 18. The order book's looking good, and um, that's um, over 20 now. Um, so I think that, that gives us confidence that the company's very healthy. And, um, you know, margins are what they are. So we can't, um, you know, we, we have to bid on all the work, so we have to get the work at whatever margin's going there. But we, we do feel it's stabilized. And um, I think um, overall, to be increasing one's turnover in this situation maybe is a is a mm -hmm. sign a, a good sign for the future mike it's lindsay in cape town um, and thanks for joining us again <coughs> i'm just looking at these numbers now and just be, actually before i get into the numbers some a, a stop what i normally do before i speak to people like yourself is i go around to the stockbroking fraternity and and say what about wilson bailey and he said well actually these numbers are quite good and hence the price is up about three and a half percent today but he also said that somebody told him and whether this is mischievous or not, that Mr. Price's total market capitalization beats the whole of the construction sector. Wilson Bailey, your company, of course, and then Murray and Robertson, Avenge, and Group 5. And I couldn't quite believe that. But even if it's, um, uh, it's slightly close to the truth, the fact is it just is sort of indicative of what's happening in South Africa at the moment. And looking at your numbers, despite the fact your revenue is up, the revenue is up in areas where the margins are extremely low. I mean, your margins have come down to 5 to 5.5% five in South Africa. Africa, but the Australian margins, where you've been growing your your, your business, only two and a half percent. I mean, that it's quite disturbing in many ways. Um, yes, Australia is a very tough economy, but I think it's it's a really good place to be for the future. And um, we worked hard at it, and I think we've um, you know really got to that position now where we are growing um, the turnover, and we expect f further growth this year. And then. Hopefully we'll be able to start improving that margin. I don't think we, we'll ever shoot the lights out in Australia, but we'll certainly um, be improving on the 2.5% that would be our, and um, maybe 3.5% is our next uh, target. But um, it is tough, but it's a, it's a good place to be. You know, so it's, a, it's a wonderful country and it's got a very strong economy. Well, it's certainly a territory that you're investing more into. I mean, expenditure of 733 million approved for uh, the financial year 2013, mostly for Western Australia, but Africa mm. as well. Now, you've mm. had a pretty interesting approach to how you tackle work on the continent specifically. Is that pretty much the way things still stand, that you're focused more on private sector work as opposed to government work? Yes, very much so. We um, focus on the mining sector in Africa and um, we've been able to uh, um, increase our number of clients um, throughout Africa considerably this year mm -hmm. um, and the margins there are a bit better. Um, yes, so we've invested a lot of um, capital uh, plant in, in Africa. Of that 70, 700 million of capex, about a third is for Australia and two thirds is for Africa, including South Africa. But um, we like to take new plant to these mines in Ghana, Sierra Leone, they're pretty remote places and, and we're doing very well and the, the clients really enjoy the way we go about our business. Mike, just you're back to your Africa focus. I know in the Roads and <coughs> Earthworks Division, you, you've been really focusing on West and Central Africa, and I think that has been such a common theme over the last few months from companies we've spoken to on, on Power Lunch, having a look at Africa. Australia is one thing, but going to Africa where there are, are, are bigger margins, so well done on that, and I think that will reap uh, dividends in the future. But just having a look at the buildings and civils engineering <coughs> side of things again, you talk about the same story as, 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 the, as, as the overall numbers. In other words, revenue up, but margin 
margins uh, falling and therefore you're, lo you're sort of having a reduction in your operating profit. And the other thing that, uh, that really stood out for me, you had two loss-making projects over the year um, in the building and civils engineering side. Is that a risk in the future because of the extraordinary competition there is for contracts in this particular sector that uh, you are in danger occasionally of making the wrong decision and making a loss-making uh, project on your books? Um, Lindsay, yes, um, there were those two projects and I think if it hadn't have been those two projects we would have not shown the, the decrease in profit. But um, as you say, you know, one's tendering at tough margins all the time and um, if you do just put a foot slightly wrong, it can go very wrong. Um, we've got a very consistent management team. We've certainly learned from those projects. We've, we understand where they went wrong and we try and correct that for the future. But, you know, in construction there's never one project that's the same, so everyone is different. So it's, um, it really is dependent on our, our people and our guys have been with us for many, many years and they, they really um, are pretty consistent. So we're hoping not to have those sort of things happen again to us and, um, you know, if, if they don't, I think we could have a, a, a a pretty good year, or we, or we would have had a good year this year if it wasn't just for those two projects. Of course, with all of that going <coughs> on, uh, cost management within the various divisions becomes uh, imperative. So what kind of strategy are you employing in tandem in getting that cost line looking a little better as well? Um, it's just the, it's, the, it's a day-to-day -day, uh, management issue. You know, we have to get the right job at the right time with the right client at the right price. And, um, you know, we, we have about 150 contracts running at any one time, so we, we and, and each of them are about a year or two years, so every year we're getting about 80 new contracts and we're finishing off 80 contracts, so we just have to be on top of our game every single minute of the day, not just every day, but every minute of the day, every decision we make. And we put a lot of emphasis on procurement at a very senior level, and, um, and that's the way we manage it, and I think that's the way we, we, um, one can only manage it. Mike, Mike, just looking at your prospect statement, it's an encouraging prospect statement. You've got uh, an order book, for example, in the building and civil um, space of 4.2 billion. Okay, that's below last year's 2011s of 5.7 billion. But since these results were released, uh, an extra 2.1 billion has been added. So there's more, um, there's more of a pipeline um, coming through. But just going back to Australia, you said you're never going to shoot the lights out there. What you have done, though, is sort of bolster your position there by taking out the um, remaining 49% of WBH car I think it is because you like the commodities sector of the Western Australian economy but you must then be slightly nervous when you see people like BHP Bulletin when they bring out their results and say well all these projects that we had planned for places like Western Australia have sort of been shelved I mean does that make you think that maybe you're a little bit hasty it would have been nice if they were carrying on with um, some of those big projects, but it's a huge economy there, and it's, um, I think we are a relatively small player, and, um, and we've got a lot of e existing clients. Our footprint throughout Western Australia is really good. We, we, we cover all the <coughs> correct areas. So um, that is disappointing, Lindsay, but um, I think because we're, we, we're working with Rios and BHPs and they're not stopping, you know, they're just, just, they're just holding back for a while, and I think at the position we're at, it hopefully will not affect us too much.